So yeah, I'm Natalie. I'm another one of the engineers at Pixie and I'm gonna demo the data source plugin that we built out for Grafana. Um, and I just wanna note that Vishal actually did most of the work here. So I'm just demoing it. Um, so for you know those that are unfamiliar with Grafana, it's a really popular dashboarding tool. And it also has a really rich plugin ecosystem that allows you to pull in data from various sources and visualize it all in one place. And so we wanted to give uh, Pixie users who also use Grafana the option to easily pull in Pixie data into their dashboards. So that is why we've made this plugin. Um, so I'm gonna kind of just show you a little bit about how it works. And uh, you know, while I do it, I'm also gonna show you a little bit about how to write queries. So even if you don't use Grafana, you might still find it somewhat relevant. So, so we're still waiting for approval from Grafana to submit this as a public plugin uh, to their repository. So um, for now, you're gonna want to download the plugin from this repo and uh, manually put it in your plugins directory. So I've already gone ahead and done that, but just to kind of demonstrate it, uh, what you would do is you would go into this releases section and then um, click on this zip file and download it. And um, you would want to put that inside the plugins directory that you have configured. So you can see that we've unzipped it and put it in there. And all of the relevant binaries uh, are present. So uh, that would be the process for doing that. And I have uh, already deployed a Grafana server, but once you would move the plugin into this directory, you would just want to do a restart of Grafana like that. And um, I guess one more thing is I've also already deployed Pixie to uh, my Kubernetes cluster. So you'll want to have done that too. So moving toward the plugin, um, I have Grafana hosted here and um, I'm going to use the flow to add a data source. So this should be pretty quick. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and select the Pixie data source plugin. And for this plugin, um, there's two pieces of information that it needs to get set up properly. The first is an API key so that when Grafana's, uh, when our plugin is making requests to your Pixie instance, it needs to know that um, you know, it's allowed to do so. So the API key is used for that. So let's grab one of those right now. So we're gonna go to the admin page and go to the API key section. And uh, we can copy it by clicking on these three dots and then click copy value. So we'll stick that in here. Um, we also need a cluster ID. So you can have multiple Pixie clusters in the same account. And so the plugin needs to know which one to talk to. So we would go to the cluster section and um, I'm gonna be demoing this on my cluster. And it's important that we get the full cluster ID for uh, the setup process. So you're gonna wanna hover here and then copy this full value that shows up on hover. You can also use the CLI, which will just print out the full thing anyway. So we've saved this and now let's, let's try it out. Let's try to build a, um, a, a dashboard using Pixie. So what you can kind of see with this is that uh, it's a pretty simple plugin. All you have to do is put a pixel script in here and then the data is gonna get plotted and you can select different types of visualizations like table or bar chart or time series. So, um, let's just do a really simple example and I'm going to kind of compose it over here and we'll build it up over time and then use it to make a, um, use it to make a, a panel in this dashboard. So, uh, let's just start really simple. So let's just count the number of HTTP requests that we're seeing in a particular namespace. So. Uh, every pixel script will start with import PX. This imports the Pixie module. Um, we're gonna want to 
create a data frame. So we're going to load the uh, HTTP events data frame. And this is Pixie's data source for all the HTTP events in your cluster. Um, one thing that we've added in order to make the plugin work well with Pixel is the ability to use a macro. And what this basically does is it allows you to put information from Grafana in directly in your Pixel script for convenience. And one such macro that we have is the time range so that you can use this time picker and the Pixel script that you put in will automatically pick that up, um, which is more convenient to you know, just changing the Pixel script every time. So uh, in order to enable that, we would do start time equals time from. And these macros and all this information is documented, uh, so you can check the reference for it later. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we want to bin this. Uh, we want to bin these events by time. So maybe plot every second or every minute how many HTTP events that we're seeing. So we're going to assign a new column using the PX bin function where we take the time column, which is nanosecond resolution, and we bin it according to a particular interval like minute or second, like I said. So this is actually another macro that we have where we can inherit the interval that's being passed by Grafana in the pixel script. So we'll just do it like that. Next, we're gonna do a group by on timestamp because we wanna count the number of requests at every time. And we'll specify that count as an aggregate as well. And you know, at, similar to the uh, plugin reference, like the pixel reference docs are, are also on our website. So if any of this is kind of confusing or you don't fully understand the syntax, um, we have tutorials so that you can better understand pixel. Um, and for time series, uh, the time underscore column is a special column. So we like to call it in the script and px.display will basically print out the table. Um, there's one more thing, which is that I'm actually only interested in a particular namespace right now. So I'm gonna actually add a filter to my pixel script that will basically say that I only want to look at HTTP events that are part of the PX sock shop namespace. So <clears throat> let's hope this live, the live coding gods are blessing me today. And uh, I'll put that in here. Great, they did. So uh, we can see that we're plotting the HTTP request count over time. And we can do things like change the time range it looks kind of similar, but um, just kind of steady traffic. And so I can maybe fail to query just then, which can happen sometimes, but um, put it back to 15. I think I jumped too soon saying the, uh, the, the coding gods, but I think you, you all saw it there. So let's move on to the next uh, step. So Basically, it's like kind of interesting to see the number of HTTP events over time, but it would probably be a little bit more interesting if I was able to see that actually by service. There it is again. So um, I, I, I wanna see this line, this line chart, but I actually wanna see it one line uh, per service in uh, my cluster because I don't really, like just the number of requests alone doesn't tell me that much. So we're going to pull out that as a new column using this thing called context, which we used uh, actually to filter on namespace already. And context is cool because it allows you to understand uh, for all the data that you have, what pod was it running on, what node was it running on, et cetera, which uh, makes us able to do richer queries. So we're pulling out this service. And we're also going to add the service to the group by so that we're binning by both timestamp and service. So we'll copy and paste that in. And 
now we can see that for all of the services in our namespace, we can see the number of, uh, you know, the number of requests that they have. And Grafana allows you to do a lot of configuration, like you can make these into bars instead of lines and things like that. Uh, you can stack the request so that it looks cumulative rather than each one plotted kind of on its own. So there's a lot of cool like configuration that you can do here. Um, there's one really cool picture feature of Pixie that we have, which is the ability to actually cluster the endpoints uh, of your service, even when there are variable URL parameters in the path. So um, I've already pre-written the script for this, so we don't have to walk through the pixel for this, but I just wanted to kind of show that off and show a different type of visualization that you can have. So let's add a new panel and let's make this one a table instead of a bar chart. And um, I'm basically gonna show a table of all of the uh, different endpoints that the catalog service has. So we'll just paste that in here and we'll supply that. So what we can see here is that um, Pixie has been able to automatically determine that there is a wildcard in the URL parameters for the catalog service. And so uh, the script has actually bucketed it under uh, you know, this path, even though for every single path here, it was actually filled out with a different item ID. So let's finish up with one more chart and it will basically be similar to the time series, but uh, showing the latency of each of these endpoints over time. And this is another one that I've pre-written so that we don't have to kind of go through the exact pixel, but we can kind of see it here. So, uh, you know, if I'm looking at my HTTP requests, a lot of times um, looking just at a service is not that helpful because there may be one particular endpoint that I have that can tell me, uh, you know, like what is the exact problem I'm having, but the other endpoints are actually fine and they drown out the signal from the endpoint that's having a problem. And so uh, using this type of script, we can, uh, you know, support drill down into endpoints and uh, I guess that's not really specific to Grafana, but it might be the kind of thing that you might want to visualize in Grafana if, you know, you were to use integration. So I think that's all on my end. And, uh, you know, I guess we can move to questions now.